Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Sew. Welcome to part two of our three part series on how to make this apron here. In part one, we got all our pieces cut out. So today, we're gonna get our pieces ready. We're gonna make the straps, we're gonna make the pockets, and we're gonna get the body of the apron ready to go. So gather up all your pieces, turn your sewing machine on, get some good music going, and let's go. All right, let's get our pieces from part one. We've got two straps. They are cut five inches wide by 23 inches long. We cut out two pockets. Those are eight inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. And we've cut out one apron body. We cut it out for our own measurements. Mine's 47 inches wide and 32 and a half inches tall. So it's the raw edges of the apron body we're gonna work on first. You want to take these raw edges and close them, encase them, so that they don't unravel. And the typical way to do that is to fold them twice and then sew them down. So we're going to do that to all four sides of the apron body. Now you could take a seam guide like this and measure up your seam allowance, whatever you chose. I'm measuring up a half inch. And you would measure and hold and press. And you would do this down the all four sides. You would just keep measuring and holding and pressing. And that's a really good way to burn your fingers. Believe me. So I've got a better way to do the measuring and the pressing. And it's not with this guy. We're going to use our sewing machine. Sewing machines have a built-in seam guide. We're going to let the sewing machine do all the measuring for us. So take the apron body over to your machine. Have regular thread in it and you're gonna put it on a basting stitch I'm using your seam guide on your machine, which I have a half inch seam allowance, so I'm going to follow the half inch seam guide on my sewing machine. And I'm just gonna sew down, no back tacking, just sew straight down, all four sides, a half inch seam guide. Look at the seam guide, not your needle. Make sure the fabric lines up to the seam guide. Just run off the edges. Again, no back tacking basting stitch. When you get all four sides sewn, just one layer there, you're going to fold up on those stitches and finger press. You're just pressing it down with your fingers and then press with the iron. This is a really fast way to do the measuring. Let the machine do the measuring for you. Now my this is my bottom edge. My bottom edge of my apron has a one inch seam allowance or a hem. So I've just folded it again on itself. And by folding this again on itself, I'm encasing that raw edge. And I'm gonna do the same for the top. So my top and bottom have a one inch, but my sides have a half inch. So let me show you how we're gonna do the sides. Again, you're gonna fold it on the stitches or the guideline and press it. It's a half inch, I've sewn in a half inch from the edge. Then open it up, open up that fold, and then you're gonna take the raw edge and put it on the crease and folding it over again. This way you're, enca you're encasing that raw edge. You're folding it twice. You take the raw edge and stick it on the crease and again, folding it. Use a pen anywhere you feel that it's not holding down for you because you're going to take it to the machine. When you're all done with all this pressing, you got to do this to all four sides. You're going to take it to the machine and sew it down. So put a pin where it's not holding enough for you. Now you want to do the guideline, the guiding stitches in a matching thread so that you don't have to unpick it should it show on your finished project. I've used a white thread here in order to, for it to show up on camera. Go ahead and fold and press. Get those corners down. Fold and press, fold and press. And sometimes I use the thread tails to hold the fabric so you don't burn your fingers. All right, now let's talk thread. We can use a top stitching thread in a contrasting color. It'll show up nicely. Top stitching thread is thick. That's why it shows up so well. You can use an all purpose thread in a matching or contrasting color. It's up to you. And if you're trying to choose between two spools that are similar but don't quite match your fabric, go with the darker of the spools because it'll blend in better. 
The thread you use is up to you. It's your choice. Here is an, here is an example of all-purpose thread that matched on my second apron. It also shows an example of really squeezing in this project in very little fabric by simply zigzagging all the raw edges and folding nothing. That is called a design choice. And here on my third apron, I did use top stitching thread contrasting um, to sew the uh, hem. It's actually a quarter inch hem. That top row of stitches is a quarter inch hem. And that bottom row of stitches is purely decorative just to make it look like I had a deep hem. If you're going to use top stitching thread, I really recommend a top stitch needle. The top stitch needle has a larger eye so you can get the thicker thread through it. Top stitching thread is thicker than all purpose thread. In the top stitching you see here on the brown apron, I used a universal needle and not a top stitch needle. And you can see that the stitches are a little bit wobbly. So the top stitch thread will give it nice um, straight stitches on woven fabrics only because it's super sharp. The Microtex needle is also super sharp and will give you straight stitches. Again, these are for wovens only, not for knit fabrics. So take your apron body over to the machine, all the edges folded. And when we fold down this edge, we wanna sew close to that fold in order to keep all the edges inside, capture them. And of course, you're also gonna to wanna to sew on the top of your apron body, especially if you're using the top stitching thread, which goes in the spool on the upper part of your machine. In the bobbin, you will have all-purpose thread because your bobbin is set up on your machine for all-purpose thread, and this way you don't have to mess with the bobbin tension. Besides, it's on the back side and no one's gonna see it. So we need to sew close to the edge without falling off the edge. And I folded a half inch, so I'm gonna look at my half inch seam guide and I'm gonna lay my fabric just to the left of that half inch seam guide so that I don't fall off the edge. Also for top stitching thread, set your stitch length at about three instead of 2.5, a little bit bigger than a normal stitch, not as big as a basting stitch, longer, that's what I mean. Back tack a couple of stitches and sew get a feel for where you're lining your fabric up to watch that you stay straight. You can also feel that fold underneath with your left hand or right hand. You can see I'm doing it with my left index finger. I'm feeling where that fold is to make sure I'm on the fold. Check it, make sure you like it, and then let it rip. You wanna sew all four edges down. Don't worry when you get to the corners, we're just gonna sew off the edge. When we get to the pockets, I will show you how to turn and that'll be in, um, sewing down the pockets in part three. And right there, let me finish this seam and tell you what I did right there. Back tack at the end. All right, what you do here is when you fold over the edges twice and then you fold them on top of each other at the corner, it creates a lot of bulk. There's a lot of layers of fabric there. And yes, your needle can go through it, but let's just make it easier on the machine and you and get a crisper corner if we trim that excess bulk off. So you see the creases here when you unfolded that corner and you're gonna cut across from crease to crease. If you're not sure about this, err on the side of cutting uh, on the outside of crease to crease be a little more generous than stingy. And then once you clip off the corner, go ahead and refold it. And that's it, then just sew through it. It's a lot easier, give you a nice pointy point. And then you're gonna finish sewing all the edges, but I wanna show you something that happened right here. It happens, people, it happens. Look. Bom, bom, the pucker. It's a little pucker, and so you can scratch it out if you scratch in the opposite direction that you sewed. And if it does move like that, then you know with the iron, when you're all done, you can iron and press in the opposite direction that you sewed and work that pucker all the way out. 
if the pucker is too big and doesn't move out, it might actually get a little smaller, but if it doesn't go away completely, one, that's your decision if you want to redo it or not. So that's up to you, but you would have to take out a couple of stitches and, re and smooth it out and redo it if you want it completely gone. So when you're done stitching all the four sides, go ahead and give it a good press. The pressing helps set the thread and the stitches. And then you want to check that you didn't fall off the edge, like I did. I fell off the edge in these places. They're not big pieces, but if you don't take care of them, the um, and when you put it in the wash, it's going to come out. So I'm just going to take a needle and thread, a hand needle and thread, and I'm going to just stitch it up because I don't want that to come unfolded and unravel. It's not worth taking out these stitches on the top for those little areas. So in order to remember, I always have to put pins in things so that later I'm like, why is this pin here? Oh yeah, I need to take care of that. So I'm putting some pins in here to remember to um, hand stitch those edges, spots on those edges closed. So let's move on to the pockets. I've already went ahead and put my guidelines, a half inch on the sides and a half inch on the bottom and one inch across the top. I've also, have taken a small narrow zigzag stitch and zigzagged around all four edges of both pockets. And this is because even though I'm gonna fold the edges in, I'm not gonna encase them like we did on the apron body. So I don't want them to unravel or get unravel-y. So I've um, just went ahead and zigzagged around all four edges. You could also serge if you have a serger, but zigzag works great. Fold in your sides and your bottom, the half inch on the guideline. And here's another great example why you would want to use matching thread for any guidelines you sew. Because, you know, it might like poke out on the side of the pocket and then you see this bright white thread staring at you. So on the corners again, if it's too bulky, if you want to get a crisp point, just trim off the very tip. These pockets aren't so bulky because it was I only folded each side once, but it gives you a nice crisp point when you have less fabric. And then you're going to um, fold down the top one inch, the top edge, this would be the open edge of the pocket. And try and line up the sides so that the undersides don't stick out on the pockets. And you want to do this, of course, to both pockets. And then when you take it to your machine, you're going to um, stitch across the open edge and you're going to edge stitch across the very top and again, sew the flap down a little ways but beyond that. So here's what I mean. I've stitched it down across the very top and then I've stitched it down so the flap doesn't come out. And of course, um, do this to both pockets. And when you're done stitching, like all your other things, you want to give it a nice press. And you'll sew down this to the apron, which will, of course, keep those other edges from unfolding out. So the pockets are done. Great. So now we're just gonna move on to the straps. So you have your straps, you want to fold long edge to long edge and you're going to sew those long edges together with a one inch seam allowance with all purpose thread. You don't need to use your more expensive thick top stitching thread here. When you get that sewn, you just need a safety pin to turn the tube right side out. A two inch wide tube is a pretty easy to turn out. but um, Unlike me, you want to put the safety pin in the direction so that you can drop the safety pin down into the tube. There you go, Mary, you got it. Then you're going to kind of guide the safety pin up with one hand and then get the tube sort of peeled out on itself. You're turning it inside out. You just guide the safety pin, and hold on to it while you peel the other end. Eventually it comes out and like I said, a two inch tube with not so thick fabric it's pretty easy to turn. Now this is gonna be the underside of your strap. Just have the seam go down the middle. You don't have to be precise. Just sort it down the middle, press it. I'm just working the seam allowance to all go the same direction there. 
Now, yes, this line is wobbly, but when you sew this tube flat, you're gonna get a consistent two inch wide strap. It doesn't matter that the seam isn't center. But we do need to take care of these short ends. We need to finish them so that they're, they're not raw edges. And how you do that is simply you're going to fold in, fold in the tube in on itself. So just a half inch, because we've left a half inch for seam allowance. So just grab it up and on the creases, I find that really easy to just fold it on in. About a half an inch. You don't have to be super precise. Just about a half an inch. And then you want to get that edge straight. And I find that if I wet the fabric, I keep a spray bottle of water nearby. The fabric is much easier to manipulate when it's wet. So you can fine tune, fine tune that fold so it's nice and straight across. And when you get it where you like it, give it a good pressing. All right, now you're gonna take it to your machine. You're gonna leave the short ends open, but you are gonna stitch down each edge of the long edges of each strap. When you go to make your last strap, when you fold in that fourth short end, lay it on top of the first strap so that they're the same length or approximately the same length. Now the straps are sewn down on the edges with the contrasting thread. Go ahead and press them, of course. Remember the short ends are still open, but they will be sewn down to the, when they're sewn down to the apron, they will be closed because I'll sew across that edge when I sew it down to the apron. So I have my two straps. They are done. And I have my pockets. I've sewn the very top edge and I've sewn the flap down, but I've left the sides and the bottom edges only just folded in. They're not sewn down. They'll be sewn down to the apron, encasing those raw edges and making sure nothing falls out of your pockets. And of course we have the apron body and we've sewn all four edges down. We folded them twice to encase the raw edge and sewn them down. So you use all purpose thread in the bobbin and if you've used top stitching thread, that's in the top upper side. And of course I have some work to do between now and part three. I've got to get my needle in thread and sew those loose parts down. So the hard part is over. You've got all your pieces ready to go. Please join me in part three when we're going to take all of these pieces, put them together and make our apron. This is the fun part. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.